Welcome to In the Community with Tiffany K. And we're back with In the Community. I'm Tiffany K, and I'm very excited to be speaking with my next guest, who is talking all about a big event in the area that I actually get to be a part of, and that's the Fredericksburg City Social. So I want to welcome in Kyle Crawford, who is here on behalf of that. Oh, Morning, Kyle. How thank are you? you? I'm great. I'm great. How are you doing today? I am doing good. Words are hard, but we're going to get through it together. We're going to try together. <laughs> exactly. <Teamwork. laughs> now, Kyle, you know, Fredericksburg City Social, Social is a new thing for a lot of us, especially those of us who are maybe new to the area. So let's just get down to the nitty gritty details right away, shall we? Yes, let's do it. What's it all about and what was the inspiration for it? So it really started with a Facebook group that we created. So we started with the Fredericksburg experience and we really started with the community. We really said, you know, how do we kind of get the community connected to each other where they can post things, we can share things about local businesses, organizations. Right. And that quickly grew. It grew a lot quicker <laughs> than we were expecting. And we kind of said, hey, what's the next steps of that? Because this started in December of 2022. Okay. Um, so just a few months ago. Wow. Um, and when we hit the first thousand followers, we said, okay, well, what now we need to put our money where our mouth is. You know, how do we really get the community active with this? And that's where kind of the Fredericksburg City Social came in. We said, let's actually get the community involved. Let's mm. get, you know, partners, businesses, the county involved. And that's really where the City Social came into it. So that's where we said, let's get a physical event out there, get people involved. And that's kind of where this idea kind of just quickly grew and we got excited about it. And that's kind of where we're at today with that. I love that because I will say I'm a transplant from Ohio from like two years ago. And so for and my roommate just came in from Ohio about six months ago. So for those of us, when you go to a new area, you're trying to find those Facebook groups to tell you what's going on in the area. Yeah. You know what? What's happening? What do we need to know about? So the fact that you made that, I'm not surprised it blew up so quickly. <laughs> I'm not at all because I've noticed there's a lot that goes on around here. Yeah. And so it's exciting. Yeah. And there's a lot of Facebook groups. And what we've realized is that's really the heart of the community it's one of the things that makes us so unique is that you can find a Facebook group down here for anything. When you look at the number of people that follow them and how active they mm -hmm. are in it, you suddenly are like, wow, it's not that difficult to get the community involved. And what makes it you know, a challenge is how do you get the businesses involved? How do you get them to want to get out there and also be represented in there? So right. that's really where we try to get this meshing of both of them together in these events and get out there. So that's kind of what the City Social is. Okay. And speaking of the City Social, what can it, attendees expect here? Like what's going to be there? I know you're going to have vendors. I'm sure you're going to have different games and stuff going on. Is it just like one big summer field day like we had in school? Is that what's happening? It kind of, you know, the inspiration kind of came back to like, those field days I yeah. used to have or um, I always think about that Parks and Rec episode with uh, the uh, fall fest that they oh, had. Oh, yes. Um, so <laughs> we don't have the budget for that, I'll say, but we're still very excited <laughs> about it. Um, um, what we're going to have is the Fredericksburg Fire Department, the Police Department, the Sheriff's going to oh, wow. be out there. We're also going to have the Fredericksburg Book Mobile out there. A lot of different vendors because we just really wanted to have the community partners out there mm -hmm. that the neighbors could come out. They could really bring family, friends out to and just have things that they can interact with. This is a free event to the community. Okay. So it's one of those things that they can just show up and roam around. You know, there's no obligation to them. Um, but they can stay for a while. They can stay. It's a three-hour event. So it's just going to be, you know, animals are going to be there. It's just really to have a good time. Right. And just have multiple kind of different things out there. The fire department's going to have their equipment. Um, sheriffs are going to be doing car seat safety checks. Oh, wow. Um, there's going to be adoptable animals, which I'm excited about. Ooh. So there's going to be just a lot of things going on there. Um, and that's kind of what the community event really is, is to offer a lot of different options to people. So that way, you know, even if this isn't for you, there's probably something there that'll pique your interest. And there's so many things that you just said that I want to get into. But first, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many things. My mind's going everywhere. But first, uh, you said this is an event for all ages, correct? Correct. All ages. Awesome. And when, where, and timing? Timing is going to be April 22nd. Okay. It's going to be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is going to be in the Westwood uh, Shopping Center right off of Plank Road on uh, Route 3. Okay. Um, so very easy to get to, um, but it's going to be that entire shopping center is going to be there. Oh, wow. Uh, so tons of parking is going to be there. So very easy to get to and everything. So That's awesome. And, you know, you were just talking about having, like, the sheriff out there, the fire department, police department. What does it mean to have them out there to help 
impact the community on all these safety issues that there may be. Yeah, I think one of the important things that I think about having them out there for the community is really humanize them. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things that we, you know, you know, they're out there, you kind of you hope you never really have to deal with them, especially right. for the emergency services. But this is really a good way for the community to connect with them to really see that these are real people that yeah. are in our community. They have a lot of great programs for them for the community that you can get involved with without mm -hmm. it having to be an emergency situation. Um, so what that's what we really wanted to do is offer these kind of things that, you know, get the community out there, interact with them, learn about these programs, also see that these are great people. Um, so that's really our biggest push there is that they're going to be there with their equipment, offering things. Um, so we're pretty excited about that is that, you know, you don't have to have an emergency to interact with community exactly. partners. So they'll be out there and we're very excited about it. I love the way that you said that because a lot of times, as you said, we were taught growing up is emergency. You don't really want to see them like they're kind of <laughs> like the superheroes from afar, but you're yeah. never going to really talk to them. Right. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> the fact that there are different like um, programs, as you were you were saying earlier about the car seat safety check for yeah. children. I didn't even know that was a thing. So <laughs> I, did, I didn't know it was a thing until one of our uh, people that are helping us with the event was like yeah i had no idea until i had a newborn that i had installed my car seat incorrectly oh, she's wow. like i thought i installed it i followed the directions yeah she had gone to an event previously when she had a newborn and realized that there was definitely a proper way to install it so we'll have two of them out there that as long as you bring your car up and you have it installed they will do a full safety seat inspection on it for oh, you wow. for free um, and apparently that is a big highlight that they do. So we're expecting that to be a pretty big turnout for them. So. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Especially at, like, as you said, if it's first time parents too, yeah. they're already overwhelmed. So might yeah, as well give exactly. them a little help in that case. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that. Now, what other attractions are going to be there? Uh, so the other attractions that are going to be there, we're going to have a couple food trucks that are going to be there. We're going to have some animal organizations that are going to be there. Um, biggest one, not biggest one, but one of the main ones that we're going to have is Leashes of Valor, okay. which is a great organization. What they essentially do is that they provide assistance animals to um, disabled veterans, and they take care of all of the training of the dogs through donations that the community provides them. Um, I think Leashes of Alice have been on your program. They recently. have, yes. I got to play with some uh, little golden puppies. Oh, so. I know. They're new bats, <laughs> I too. Wanted, yes. yes. Uh, I wanted, they're like 10 weeks, I think. I wanted to take them home so bad. I know. Yeah, uh, me too. And I'm just like, I can't already have two dogs right now. And... I have an apartment, and my boyfriend has a dog at his house. And I'm like, you sure you don't want another? <laughs> well, see, I think my dogs would just ruin any training that these oh, dogs yeah. have had. My dogs are just completely ruined. They have no manners whatsoever. They'll send them back to the training. Yeah, be like, what'd you yeah. do? I'll probably <laughs> send my dogs to the trainers like can you actually swap these ones out but i need them back oh god um, this is they're a great organization so they're gonna have some of their dogs on hand and they're just gonna be talking about what they do and they're just a really big community they open their new facility mm -hmm. they just had their open house this past weekend um so just having those kind of different things again it's the community partners we're bringing on that are also doing these programs in the community right and we also want to highlight those programs that we're doing so it's kind of a twofold that we got these great businesses to come out here, but they're also doing these programs that really need community involvement as well for volunteering opportunities. So that's kind of what we look for is these good partnerships together. And you did just mention that you had adoptable animals from the SPCA. Can we talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, we could. I could, we could actually turn this entire segment into that. I know. I'm uh, like, oh, give me more. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I love animals. Uh, so, yeah, we are going to have the uh, Fredericksburg SPCA out. Um, and they are going to have adoptable dogs and also foster opportunities as okay. well because, you know, it's one of those things that it's not just about you have to come out and adopt dogs. So that's mm -hmm. a huge commitment of time. There's mm -hmm. also the foster opportunities out there for people that just want to see if it's, you know, the right opportunity for them and their families or them in their situation. You know, there's usually two to three week periods that where you just foster the animal. Okay. Um, some people are lifelong fosters. They just want to keep fostering dogs until, yeah. you know, they find the right one and then it makes sense. Um, so they will be there as well as we'll also have the Virginia Tech continuing education. They're going to bring, be bringing out some farm animals for us. Oh, very cool. We're still locking down what farm animals to bring, <laughs> but we think that we're getting some sheeps and some goats. And then we have a local farm that is bringing out three alpacas for oh, us wow. as well. So we are definitely having um, a lot of animals out here because i think if you get animals to the community i think they really enjoy that and a lot of picture opportunities so i was about to say picture opportunities it's a big draw in for families especially kids if yeah. they want to go out and be introduced to that as well yeah and also the i love the fact you're doing adoptable but also you're able just to see the animals you yeah. know because a lot of times it's either or at events so yeah. it's nice to have those options yeah 
So that's, that's, I love this. I'm so excited for this event. <laughs> now, like, I go backwards for a second because yep. you said food vendors. Is there any way that I can get a sneak peek of who's going to be there? Ah, uh, we are still locking everything down. We have two food vendors. One is going to be focused on desserts, ice cream, Ooh. and treats, which is good. You only need that one, in my opinion. I was but say, yeah, a lot of people, <laughs> well, we said, hey, it's 10 a.m., but, you know, there's never a bad time for desserts. So no. we'll be pretty good with that one. Um, no. And the other one is more of a comfort food. They're going to have mac and cheese, hot Oof. dogs, french fries, all the good stuff. Um, so those are the two that we have locked down. Their comfort food one's still working on the menu, so we don't have a set one yet. Mm -hmm. um, and because we're in the Westwood Shopping Center, we also have the Popeyes and Starbucks right there in right. the backyard. So if anyone needs a boost of caffeine or anything, okay, we also have that right there. But we have the two food trucks that are at our event um, providing food and drinks. So. so you can bring in food with you, though, if you get the Popeyes or Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, this is any kind of, trust me, we don't have, like, the armed bodyguards or right. security guards <laughs> stopping anyone from doing anything. It's a very kind of casual event, so. Is that M&M's in your purse? No, I swear. Yeah, this isn't like going to, like, the movie theaters back in the 90s right. or early 2000s where we're, like, checking everyone's bags and everything. Yeah, so. where your parents stuffed it in there. Yeah, I totally yeah. understand that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I kind of want to talk more about the local businesses and organizations yeah. as part of your events. How have they really shown support? for this and are there any like special partnerships or collaborations that have actually come from this yeah yeah so it's actually been really great at first when we came up with this idea we were extremely nervous because we're a brand new kind of organization and all right. of a sudden you're just like you you think the worst no one wants to help you know that mm -hmm. kind of thing um as soon as we got everything up and running we were so amazed at all the opportunities that were coming our way and we almost feel bad about it because we have a very limited amount of space now. So mm. what we kind of realize is, hey, this will be an annual event for us, we're hoping. Pretty sure based on numbers <laughs> right now. Um, and so what it looks like is next year, it'll probably have to be at a bigger event. But that's a great thing. The downside is, is that we had to cap kind of, you know, the capacity at how many vendors we could actually have mm. on hand. And unfortunately, what it did was we couldn't allow everyone to be there, but it did allow us to create really great communication with people to say, hey, we're not able to do it at this event, but it opens up the door for us to do possibly a fall event. Right. But also, just like you said, too, it also allows us to do exactly what this event has really been geared for. Just like we mentioned with Leashes of Valor, where we've already had some of our people go volunteer with them and do yeah. things. The SPCA, where we've already reached out and said, hey, we'd like to do kind of a group thing with you guys as well. And I think that that's really where it's opened up those opportunities for us is mm -hmm. to kind of do what the heart of our community kind of action items are is to look at those relationships and then really get involved with them. So we've had a lot of businesses that have reached out and we said, we're really sorry that we're not able to have mm -hmm. you at this event. We are doing some really good raffle giveaways that we're still letting businesses know if they do on a raffle, we're going to promote you and feature you. And okay. a lot of people have still said we would love to be a part of that. Right. Um, and we've just said at this event, we're kind of closed out, but we do plan on doing more events. Mm -hmm. But we do still want to create those great um, connections with people because we want to work on them, because especially the number of organizations not even just businesses that are selling a product, but right. the organizations in the community that provide just services to people have been incredible about saying, hey, we do this, we do that for people in the community. And we've said, hey, we would love to partner with you just mm -hmm. on something down the road to line from here. So it's been a great opportunity for us. That's been amazing because especially as you said, this was created in December of 2022. And it's gone so big already that you have to, yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> as you said, cap it off a little bit. Yeah. But it's good for the future. And I think it's really cool that you're able to bring in all these community organizations. Once again, I even if you've lived here your whole life, I feel like we don't know our neighbors anymore. We yeah. aren't connected. You've told me about a couple of places I've never heard of already. Yeah. And so it's an amazing time to be able to connect with the community as well. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest part of this is just come out and learn, learn exactly. about all of it. And I think that that's kind of the nice thing is that instead of having to kind of go on the Internet and look at one off kind of situation. Yeah. Here's an event where we just have, you know, the government community partners. We have organizations. We have everything that's just kind of in one central location for you to just come out. It's a free mm -hmm. event. You know, just stop by, you know, even on your way to there's a lot of other events. It's Earth Day that day. So there's right. going to be a lot of things going on. Everyone's hoping the weather's great. Fingers We're, crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. I hope it's just like today. Yeah. So it's one of those things that, you know, we hope that um, it's great weather and everything. But our starts at 10 o'clock. There's a ton of great events throughout that entire day. Mm -hmm. Where it's just that we have all these different people out there and groups and events where it's just stop by see what other things are happening in the community, learn about these different programs out there. And it might just right. pique your interest to kind of say, 
hey, maybe I do want to volunteer at the SPCA. Maybe I do want to be a part of the Book Mobile program, which is incredible. They yes. provide free books to kids all over the county and everything like that. And it's just a great organization. So it's just these kind of good community partners that we've teamed up with just to let the community know that they're out there mm -hmm. and we're kind of just trying to bring them all together in one place so you can learn more about them and it's all about ease right yep. it's all about that because as you said a lot of us don't want to take a lot of the time to try to find these websites yep. if they're legit or not and also talking to someone face to face is a whole different thing so exactly and i think also after the i just after the pandemic this is a big way to be able to get back out there. And I know we're a little bit, a couple of years off of that, but still, it's affecting everybody. Yeah. It still is with socializing and getting out and having events. Yeah. So being able to have this big thing and reconnect with the community, yeah. it's such a great idea. Agreed. I love that. Uh, so if someone wants to volunteer or contribute to the event, are there any opportunities still available? I know you said you're capping it a little bit. We are, we are capped at uh, <laughs> participating vendors. We are capped at. Um, but it's definitely if people reach out to us through our Facebook site um, or anything like that, we have already got the ball turning on kind of a fall event. Okay. Um, so we're starting to think about that. There will be plenty of um, volunteers for the event. We're all going to have our Fredericksburg City Social shirts on. There'll probably be 20 of us. Awesome. Um, so we'll be all there to help. But as far as people that still might want to contribute, as far as especially businesses that want to contribute, right. we are still doing a ton of raffle prizes. So anyone that would like to contribute, we say... Um, or donate um, a gift. These will all be donated out to anyone that attends the event. We're just going to raffle off these prizes okay. and obviously give credit to the business. And again, that's kind of the community feels that if someone donates uh, a bottle of wine or donates um, one of our vendors donated free yoga classes because oh, they're wow. opening a brand new yoga studio where that again, we want to draw much as much attention back to these businesses as possible. So we want to give whoever wins that raffle the owner's information of the yoga studio so they can kind of interact with that person and really have that experience with that person right instead of just hey here's an email with your voucher your coupon to go to your free classes exactly so it's that community feeling of kind of getting people connected again so we're just telling businesses that if they still do want to participate particularly in this event we are still taking any kind of donations or services um that they would like to do for the raffle mm -hmm. we're happy to do that but if they do want to reach out for any kind of future fall events or whatever we might do with this event next year, which is <laughs> crazy. We're already talking about the next year event. Um, we are um, starting to slowly think about that. Yes. I mean, you should be at this rate. As you said, it's blown up already, which is insane. <sighs> yes. Yes. Very it is cool. Very insane. Yeah. Um, are there any opportunities if anyone wants to just volunteer with the event that day? Um, not so much for the volunteer. We have everything really taken care of. The okay. reason why is all of our community partners, like the fire department, everyone, they're going to have their own vendors on hand. Right. Especially if we're going to have animals and all these kind of things. Last thing we want to do is have, you know, I, I probably need to stay away from the animals because I'm going to be so excited <laughs> to be near them. They're going to uh, be trying to find you. They're like, where'd Kyle go? Yeah, He's where's still with Kyle? the animals. Like, yeah, he, he just adopted four dogs. Right. Now we have no more dogs for the people that came out here that really want the dogs. Whoopsies. Uh, so um, the community partners are already bringing all their volunteers out. Oh, we perfect. brought our people out just to have everyone there. So we're good. We just want people to come out and enjoy themselves and just really get a feeling for the event and the people that are there. It's like you said, just creating that connection, getting out again, mm -hmm. and just having kind of that feeling feeling of just you know learning about your community partners and everyone that's out there right and i know this is on a lot of people's minds especially just nowadays unfortunately what are like some of the safety precautions that are going on during this event and everything to yep. make sure everyone has a fun and good and safe time yeah um so part of the thing we have is that we are in a very large shopping center mm -hmm. so we really wanted to make sure that people weren't on top of each other right um obviously you know we're not disney world here we <laughs> wish we had that kind of operating budget um but that's why we try to be really strategic about not having too many vendors mm -hmm. we really didn't want to just put everyone on top of each other and make it a really unpleasant experience right um so we really wanted to play around with the spacing make sure that everyone had the time to be able to walk around kind of go that way um and the biggest thing with safety is we do have the fire department and the right. police and the sheriff right there on hand so mm -hmm. We're not too worried about, you know, major <laughs> safety issues. Yes. Um, but we have been really um, conscious about the fact that we wanted to make sure that all the parking would be in kind of in the main side of the shopping center. Okay. And this would be off on the side where we have a lot more control and coned off a lot of the areas. So that way family and friend and everyone can walk around freely. Mm -hmm. And then we've been really smart about where we're going to place the vendor. So that way, you know, you don't have alpacas and dogs next to each other and <laughs> yes. they've never seen that species before and they're just barking nonstop. Right. So we've been trying to be really good about just making sure the flow of the event is as easy as possible 
because last thing you want to do nowadays is when you have free time is go to something and you're just crammed there together yes. and it's just not fun and a lot so, of times yeah. you don't get to see all the vendors around you yeah you know when there's those long lines you're like i'll just pass this one up i don't want to exactly. wait type of thing so and, yeah and that's kind of thing is if we got these vendors to donate their time to us and everything we really want to give them the opportunity because we kind of picked them because they're offering something back to the community right and so we think that there's always a need there to kind of teach them about stuff so we want to make sure that we got them the space that they needed so they could talk about them and kind of have those things so it's like you said we want to make it enjoyable for everyone that's awesome i'm very excited about this event but i have to ask you we've said it a few times it's already blown up from here what are future plans oh future for plans. the social future plans um so as far as kind of fredericksburg experience which is the facebook group that started um, yes we are continuing to grow it um that one is it's our it's our it's our firstborn kind right. of thing so it continues to grow um we just continue to partner up with businesses and grow it um obviously instagram kind of comes with it but mm -hmm. as far as the big kind of main event the city social if everything looks the way it looks right now and we have a very successful event which we feel very good about and you guys will be there and we're very excited about it <laughs> um next year it's more about kind of finding a venue mm -hmm. um that accommodates kind of us having a bigger space that really you know plays well and gives us more timing because like you said we started only a few months ago right and we're able to put this together and it wasn't put together sh you know quickly or right. in a way that's <laughs> not well done but we did kind of find a venue that worked for us very quickly um but next year it lets us get more vendors out there more community partners more kind of time to kind of vet more programs out there right so i think that that's really where the future goes for us is to really say like hey let's get the feedback from this first event mm -hmm. and then really grow it from there let's see what people really liked about it and let's see what people also didn't like and then kind of evolve from there mm -hmm. but next year we're just thinking about overall how do we get a big space? How do we get more community partners that are offering great programs that we want the community to know about? Because right. that's more important. You can always find someone that wants to, you know, set up shop and right. sell you something, but we're more worried about finding the right partner that wants to tell you about a program that we think the community cares about. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're kind of thinking about is where do we find a good spot that can accommodate more people and works for our community partners. So that's so, kind of next year. In other words, what we're saying is you need to go out to the Frederick City Social so that we can make it even bigger next year. <laughs> yes, it, it, to this free event where everything is taken <laughs> care of for you. The more people that show up, the more need we have for next year, making it even bigger and Wow, it's going to be a big event. So I'm very excited. And one more time uh, for everybody, tell us when, where, timing, and also how can they follow along with any updates that you may have? Any updates. So it, this is going to be April 22nd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is in the Westwood Park uh, Shopping Center right off of Route 3, which is 1931 Plank Road. Um, as far as following us, you can follow us on uh, Facebook through the Fredericksburg experience. Um, we also, and through there, you can find any information. Um, we have the Eventbrite, which you can get tickets to. Tickets aren't required. It just right. gives us a good idea. idea of who's got a ticket, even mm -hmm. though we're pretty sure at this point, it's kind of a lost cause for <laughs> knowing that more people are coming than all the tickets that are on there. Yes, that's we true. Because we have the Eventbrite, then we have the Facebook thing. It's like trying to even match up how many tickets are both of them now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can follow us there. Um, and yeah, that's where you can follow us to learn more about the event and just us in general. That's awesome. Well, I'm very excited for you, Kyle, and your entire group. And I hope for a successful Fredericksburg Social, City Social this year. Excited to be out there. And thank you so much for coming in to talk with me today. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And that'll do it for In the Community this week. If you are a nonprofit and need to bring attention to your cause or organization, please reach out through this station's website. And we will see you next week.